Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of the L24 engine rebuild series. Today we will be disassembling the cylinder head. So this is something that a lot of people choose to farm out to the engine shop that's going to be doing the rest of their engine. There's nothing wrong with that, you don't get docked any man points. But this is something that we wanted to cover in the videos to show you in case you wanted to do this process yourself. We're going to start by removing the rocker lash springs. Start by lifting each lash spring from the notch inside of the rocker arm. Next, you want to push out the two bottom hooks on the bottom half of the lash springs that attach it to the retaining clip. And then you can just lift it directly out. The vast majority of parts that you take off the valve train here have to be kept in the order that you take them off. So we're going to be even more meticulous than we were for the piston and rod removal process. These lash springs, however, are an exception. You can store them together in one container. To prepare the rockers for removal, Ensure that the cam lobe of the rocker that you want to remove is pointed 180 degrees away from the rocker arm as shown here. To verify that you have it in the right position, you should be able to just kind of wiggle the rocker a little bit and then you know it's good. To rotate the camshaft such that the lobes are in the correct position, you can take a set of vice grips and attach it to the non-lobe portion of the camshaft and rotate it. Before you do this, make sure that the rotational kind of profile of the vice grips don't interrupt anything else they shouldn't be hitting the springs obviously or anything so just take a look at that and also when you remove it take care it's going to be hard because they're tight but take care that they don't kind of fly off and hit anything when you try to remove them in fact because the valve train is such a delicate area and these do have to go on pretty tight for you to be able to turn it i think it's worth doing something like this where you can take a crescent wrench around whatever your handle is on your vice grips and loosen it so that's a lot easier just to unlock them and bring them away safely. Now you will notice that in some of these clips I have the cam sprocket back on. This is because when you rotate it's possible for the camshaft to sort of walk towards the rear and actually fall out and you certainly don't want this to happen. So it is worth actually going back and taking your cam sprocket uh, and the bolt that attaches it to the camshaft and loosely attach it so that it prevents this from happening. So what we want to do here is take a 14 millimeter open end wrench which fits on the rocker pivot and a 17 millimeter open end wrench which fits on the lash adjuster lock nut. Take your 17 millimeter wrench and first just loosen the lock nut. With the lock nut loosened you want to hold it in place with that 17 millimeter wrench and then take your 14 millimeter wrench and thread that pivot down as far into the cylinder head as you can. You'll feel it when it starts to stop uh, or it might start turning the, the lock nut itself, and then you can take the, uh, the 17 millimeter wrench off and rotate the pivot in until you cannot anymore. So if you tried to pull the rocker arm off right now, you would notice that we're just about all the way there. We just need a little bit more clearance to be able to pull that directly out of the cylinder head. So we're going to get that extra clearance by compressing the valve spring down. So take something with a rubber or wooden handle, something soft, and you want to lever against the non-lobe portion of the camshaft uh, to push down on the valve spring. You really don't need to push it too much. Um, as you'll see here on this first one, it actually fell out uh, towards the valve spring, so I had to just keep it compressed while I sort of reached around the back there and pulled that up. Um, but usually you should be able just to pull them directly out towards you. As was the case with the cylinders, we are going to count the rocker arm number in terms of front to back. So the frontmost rocker arm is one and the rearmost rocker arm is 12. If you've never done this before, the first couple might be a little bit uh, rough, uh, but you have plenty to do. So eventually you'll get the hang towards the end of it. Then remove the lash caps that sit on the top of the spring retainer and put them in the same bag that you put all of the other rocker arm hardware. Next, we're going to take the front camshaft bolt, the fuel pump eccentric, and the camshaft sprocket itself back off of the front of the camshaft because uh, we're preparing to take the camshaft out. Uh, you also want to loosen these front two bolts that secure the thrust plate to the front cam tower, and then you can just take that off. So in the sake of honesty here, I sped this clip up because I did a pretty bad job of this and dropped the camshaft a little bit, and it was not totally smooth. But what you're trying to do here is just pull it out and make sure all of the lobes go through the cam towers without banging up against anything. 
Uh, just take your time and look at every piece. You have to look at all of those different cam tower locations. So next I decided to remove all of the rocker arm pivots. I just use a deep socket the size of the lock nut uh, and I just put that on a drill so I could remove these quickly because they are threaded in there pretty deep. Next we're going to prepare to remove these cam towers and to do that we're just going to clean the tops of them and write in order in a marker and if you haven't, uh, haven't already heard it enough these have to be kept in order and the ordering we're going to use is front to back. Front cam tower is one and the rearmost cam tower is five. I'm not certain if it's even possible to put these on backwards but just to be safe I put a front facing arrow on each of these. Same program as before. Then for each cam tower you want to break the bolts. I had to use a breaker bar for these and remove both sides of the bolts. Keep them organized again so they go on the exact same place that they came off. Uh, just set them aside so that when you do take off the cam tower you can just put the bolts back in their holes and package them up safely so that they don't get mixed up and move on to the next one. Next we're going to remove these wire clips that are attached to the rocker bushings and the best method I could find to do this is hold down one end with a set of pliers and then take some needle nose pliers and kind of pull up that one end there. Eventually it'll come loose uh, and then you just need the one set of pliers that you were using to hold it and grab on to the loose end and just kind of rotate and pull it up and they'll come right off. So here you can see me doing something that I'm going to recommend that you definitely do not do. Uh, and the first thing is I went to AutoZone and purchased the only valve spring compressor that they had available. And it was the style that kind of grabs onto the spring from, I guess, the bottom most part of it that you can grab and has that piece on it that I actually repurposed and used on a C-clamp. Um, and you actually, with those, you have to restrict the downward movement of the valve yourself somehow, uh, whether it's placing a piece of wood on it or something or a socket or something and, or using gravity. I don't know, but I really didn't have any luck with that. But what I was able to do, and this is the second thing I'm going to recommend you don't do, is I repurposed the head of that and put it onto my C-clamps here. And it worked enough, but it, it only has those two jaws on it. So it was very unstable, and as a result, it was very unsafe. Um, anytime you're working with springs, you have to be very careful and take care not to lose an eye. Uh, and I didn't really take that care here. So that's why I'm recommending you don't do this. Um, I am going to go buy a set of real valve spring compressors on Amazon. I will supply a link for the exact set that I used, uh, well, that I will eventually buy for when I put these back in, uh, because there's no sense in using the wrong tool for this. They're cheap. Um, Amazon will have them to you in two days. Um, I got impatient here, uh, but this did end up being good enough just for removing these. But hopefully that should not preclude me from being able to provide some good instruction as far as procedure goes. You want to compress the spring only enough so that you can remove the two keepers inside of the retainer. Take care that the other side of your C-clamp style valve compressor is firmly on the valve with a small piece of wood in between to avoid damaging the valve. If you pull out the keepers when you have the spring compressed enough, it's helpful to have a magnet because it'll just pull them out pretty quickly, but you can also use some needle nose pliers. Once you have both of the keepers removed, you can relieve pressure on the spring by loosening your valve spring compressor. Now you can remove the inner and outer springs, the spring retainer, and the inner and outer spring seats. These just look like small washers, but they can blend in so it can be easy to forget them. Uh, if you are unsure, you can just go over it with your magnet and see what pulls up. Uh, but of course, all of this stuff is going back into the same bag, so you keep everything in order. Before removing the inner valve spring seat, you will have to remove off the old rubber valve stem seal, which is held in by a clip as well. Don't worry if you damage these a little bit, as you will most likely, probably definitely, be replacing these as a part of your rebuild. So next you're going to be removing these rocker bushings. I had a really hard time with this. The book recommends that you take a box end of a wrench, uh, attach it to it as best you can. There's not a whole lot of area of that hex that you can grab onto with the edge of the cylinder head there. And then you, he recommends that you shock it with a hammer. I didn't have any luck with this. I tried a few different times, a few different angles. The only thing that really worked for me was taking a breaker bar, trying to maximize leverage, uh, holding down the cylinder head with my other hand, uh, and just pushing very hard. Uh, it never really felt like I had a clean break. Pretty much every time we actually ended up breaking the bushing loose, the breaker bar kind of flew off. 
Uh, but then I looked down and tried to turn and thought, oh, okay, they're actually turning now. So it did break it. It's just you do actually need a lot of force to break these loose. At this point, the only thing left to remove are the cam tower dowels. Take care not to damage these as they will be reinstalled later on. Just lightly compress these with a set of channel locks as you see me doing here. And that concludes the teardown of the cylinder head. The next video in the series is most likely going to cover preparing for the machine shop or the engine shop, um, what you're going to need to bring them, what you're going to need to ask them to do, how to inspect these things as much as you can, um, any kind of final preparations we need to do with lock and cylinder head. Um, but I've been getting some really great comments on these videos so far, so thank you to everyone who has watched these videos and commented and provided feedback. Uh, I'm really hoping they're helpful to you, and I hope to see you in the next one.